welcome everybody to a conversation with Robert Yeoman, cinematographer. Uh, so let's start talking about obviously the Grand Budapest Hotel, which you're nominated for this year. What struck me the most about the film and about your work is just the symmetry. That comes from Wes, mm -hmm. and I, I've been working with him, so I've done seven movies with him, so I kind of know what to expect. And uh, if I come into a room and I say I'm shooting this way, mm -hmm. I, I, what we do is I have the camera assistants take a piece of uh, 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 tape. So we put one on one side of one map box and the other on the other side. And we always just run to the corners of the room to make sure the camera is right in the dead center. Because I know that uh, when Wes walks in, the first thing he's going to say to me is, uh, are we square to the wall there? And I'll say, yes, we are. You know, so we kind of do that by habit. Um, and whenever we make sets, um, they're very well designed where we go in with a, 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 a director's finder with the actual lenses on it. And we very carefully tape out where the door should be, where the window should be, because oftentimes, if you're familiar with Wes's movies, we're doing squish pans where we, you know, start center on the door, we go over to the window, you know, we're very, everything's got to be very symmetrical. And uh, so actually the sets are kind of constructed to accommodate that symmetry. Am I to understand you've surreptitiously hired this young man in the position of a lobby boy? He's been engaged for a trial period, pending your approval, of course. Uh, perhaps, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mosher. You're most welcome, Mr. Gustav. You're now going to be officially interviewed. Should I go and light the candle first, sir? What? The no. Candle. What are the pros of working with Wes? It's such a long collaboration for you two. Uh, is it, does it mean that he just kind of flickers an eyelid and you know what he means? Oh, <laughs> uh, yes and no. I mean, we spend a lot of time in prep together. And um, we go to, uh, for this particular movie, he and I, uh, he lives in Paris. and. Uh, I flew to Paris and hung out with him a few days there, and then we took a train. He doesn't like to fly, so we took a train to Prague mm -hmm. and uh, just spent a few days there just kind of rummaging around Prague, looking at all these uh, really cool old buildings, and just to kind of get the feel of what Eastern Europe was like. And uh, then we went to Germany from there where we shot, and we spent a lot of time going to every location and just kind of talking about shoot, how we're going to shoot it and our production designer Adam is there and uh, you know Wes will say oh it would be great if we had this here or that there and so we plan it pretty extensively uh, and then on our last two movies he does uh, what we call animatics which are these little cartoons uh, hand drawn very crude where uh, Wes does the voices of all the characters and uh, they kind of give a very rough idea of what the camera's going to be doing and mm -hmm. where the people would be within the frame. And uh, uh, they're always very interesting. I, I, you know, I, I think it would be an interesting study to take the animatic and then put the actual movie up next to it. <laughs> you could kind of see uh, you know, how close they really are in many ways. And, and what I find personally very fascinating is Wes's readings because he plays all the characters and mm -hmm. to see how he does it versus the actors end up doing it, you know, it's, it's always very interesting. You've nothing to fear. You're always anxious before you travel. I admit you appear to be suffering a more acute attack on this occasion, but truly and honestly, oh dear God, what have you done to your fingernails? I beg your pardon? This diabolical varnish, the colour is completely wrong. Oh really, don't you like it? It's not that I don't like it, I, I am physically repulsed. With Wes, everything is figured out pretty much beforehand, and um, so if the actors move, they do. If they're sitting there, they sit there, and you know, hopefully they get up and move around a little bit, because it, it, it gives me so much more uh, uh, possibilities of moving the camera, which I like to do, and so, you know, if I were sitting here talking and I get up and walk over to that room, you know, I, I might say, okay, well, maybe we're over her to me, and as I get up and walk over there, I camera dollies with me, and so you kind of see it kind of falls into place, so it, it you know, it, it, it depends on how they block it, um, you know, and, and it, again, I am always encouraging them to get up and move around, you know, and sometimes you know, it, it almost seems unnatural uh, in a conversation that I would get up and walk around, but then if you watch movies, people are always walking around a room, you know? I mean, it's just kind of, uh, and I think it gives you a lot more visual possibilities. Mm. So I'm always encouraging people to get up and move, you know? Um, you know, what's great for me is that he, 
is so uh, concerned about the frame, and, and uh, so if people aren't hitting their marks, he will be the one to say, um, excuse me, uh, could you be two inches that way? You know, I mean, where a lot of directors just kind of let it go, and it's up to me to be the bad guy and <laughs> kind of push him around a little bit, which I, I don't like to do, but, you know. Um, Luckily, if, when I'm on his movies, he does it for me. <laughs> He's the full guy. Yeah, he is. Um, do you get issues with other teams? So do you have like creative differences on set? Uh, occasionally, uh, stars will have, uh, uh, and this is not on a West movie, but on other movies, uh, stars will have their personal makeup artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know they'll they'll be kind of standing behind you with their binoculars, and if there's any little wrinkle or something, they'll come to me and could you do something about that? And, you know, <laughs> so you get you get involved in that a little bit. You know, if there, you have a big movie star, mm -hmm. you, as a cinematographer, I always feel it's my responsibility to try to make them look good. I you know I would never purposely want to do something to make a big movie star look bad. So uh, you know you're just kind of forced into that style of lighting, um, particularly on the comedies, uh, you know, uh, just so that the actors will all look good, mm. you know. Um, but so makeup a little bit, and wardrobe occasionally. Production design, I never too much. I, uh, you know, I, I generally, uh, to me, the most important person is the director. And the second most important person is probably the production designer, and we become best friends. I spend a lot of time with them in prep, and we talk over things pretty extensively, and uh, hopefully, I, I think generally they're pretty happy with what we do. We found the butler. He's hiding out in the remote foothills near Gable Meister's Peak. Our contact convinced him to meet you midday tomorrow at the observatory on the summit. Tell no one. He'll explain everything. Your train departs in four and a half minutes. Here's your tickets. Oh, third class. It was overbooked. But the conductor used to be a sommelier at the old Versailles. He pulls some strings. You'll need these for the dining car. Once the film is finished, shooting, how much longer are you working on it afterwards? Or is uh, that it? Well, typically, once we're done with principal photography, I'm finished. Uh, sometimes when they have special effects, uh, I mean, they always have their own team that does that. Mm -hmm. I might get involved in it uh, a little bit. I'll go over and just kind of throw some ideas with them or help them with the lighting. Uh, uh, and then what happens is several months later after the film is edited, I'm always involved in the, the color timing the fun of the finished film. There's a, a, what we call a digital intermediate in the States. I don't know what they call it over here. but. Uh, and uh, that's where you go in and you just do a very uh, careful color correction of everything. And, <laughs> density and uh, contrast, you know, we, we control that pretty carefully. So I would always be involved in that. That takes usually about two weeks. Robert Yeoman, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.